Hi, I, my name is Terry Ditt. I previously did a video on uh, how to do uh, multicolor resin print using alcohol inks. Um, I used this model by Martin uh, PMP from my mini factory called Butterflies Necklace. Um, and as you can see, it turned out really well. Um, so it's nice and clear and uh, really beautiful color, colors on there. Uh, so, I mentioned at the end of that video that I would do another video showing um, how to uh, do a single color um, and sort of pick your uh, tint, I guess, um, or shade of, of color. So, I have a clear uh, print ready to go. Um, I'm using um, M3DM's Haunted Horseman. Uh, she has it available for free on uh, Thingiverse, and I will link the uh, model in the description. I'll link the butterflies in, in this model here, as, or in this video as well. Um, so, the goal is to uh, have a similar effect to this. I'm going to keep it blue as well. I, I, I need two of these models, so uh, that's what we're going to go with. So, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than last time. I better get some gloves on here first. Uh, so last time I kept the model on the build plate and I did that because the model was a little bit more delicate and um, it was just easier to work with. So because this is a miniature and um, it'll sort of stand on its own and I'm doing all one solid color, I'm just going to take it off the build plate, clean it up first, pour the ink on, um, and then I'm going to dilute the ink in uh, the alcohol, so uh, we can go from there. Get this off of here. Okay, so you can see it's fairly clear already. I might have um, done a little bit of overexposure on it. It's got a little yellow tinge to it. Um, that could be because the res, like the build plate's been in alcohol ink and it might have contaminated my resin a little bit, but get this out of here. So I'll just take this model off this build plate. back on and get her out of the way. So something I should mention about this model, um, it actually comes pre-supported uh, if you join uh, M3DM's Patreon. Um, so this is, I didn't do any of the supports here, this is all pre-supported. Uh, prints really nicely too. So um, last couple times I've printed this model, the um, supports like you can see they just pop right off so pretty nice not to have to spend any time taking that off or adding supports I guess when you're about to print okay so I've got uh, I think most of the supports off there anyways um, enough to kind of get the point across so I've got two uh, buckets of 99% IPA, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, I've got one that I try and keep as clean as I can, so I try and only put clear resin in it. And then the other one um, is what I, um, I guess, clean my alcohol ink prints in. So it's quite dirty, um, and I'm worried about staining it. I'm, I'm, I'm not terribly worried about this one because it's already going to have color. But if I'm trying to wash something and I want it to stay clear, um, I definitely don't want to wash it in there because it, it definitely stains it. So uh, what I like to do is not spend a lot of time in the alcohol. I find the longer you keep it in, the more likely it is to, um, to frost up and... Um, you'll wind up with 
you want clear resin, you want it to look like glass, and uh, the last thing you want is a frosted finish on it. So, so I find that that's probably long enough, and you can see already um, it's not quite as clear as it was when it first came off the print bed. Let's see if that'll work there a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to put this uh, first box of alcohol out of the way. And so this is sort of where uh, you can pick your colors or add drops where you want. Uh, I mentioned in the other video that I did, um, it's pretty neat leaving clear spots um, as well, but I'm going for a more uniform approach here. Um, I don't know if I want to touch this other model here. but So just to give you an idea of the difference in color um, you can get, so this first one was uh, painted using the same ink. Uh, so all I'm going to do now, and you can see it's not super even, I, whoop, I could do a better job, but as soon as I dropped it into that IPA, you can see how it just uh, evened out the coloring everywhere. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep dipping it in until I get the color I want. I'm almost there um, already, and you see how, how nice that color is. It almost looks like glass. I think I'm going to be happy with that. So, oops. so I have a little bit of ink on my fingers. Good idea to wear gloves when you're using that ink. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to hurt your fingers, but it definitely dyes it. Um, so, yeah, simple as that. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I wish I had a camera set up a little bit better. I might try and move a camera here quickly. But I'm just going to use my air brush air compressor without any paint in it. Let's see if this turns this camera and see if I can get this actually. So hopefully that focus is okay. And uh, I'm actually just going to dry that quickly. Okay, so I'm going to take my gloves off here. I'm going to wash my hands after. I know I shouldn't be touching this resin until after it's been cured, but uh, I just wanted to compare the two for before and after. Um, so you can clearly see a difference. The color is very similar. Is that going to focus on there? The color is very similar, but one of them is obviously frosted. So this is the uncured, and this is the cured. And when I pull it out of the... Right, that was a lot nicer there. Um, so this is the uncured one, and this is the cured one. Um, when it comes out of the, the UV box, it'll still be this frosted color. Um, but you'll see once I put a clear coat on it, it'll just turn into glass, just like that. Um, so let's get into the UV box. So I like to check... Uh, the models every 30 seconds, one minute kind of thing, um, just for tackiness. And this one still feels a little bit tacky, so I'm going to put it back. Um, you, I really don't want to leave it too long. The longer you leave it under the curing, I find the, the hazier it stays uh, when you're trying to apply the clear coat. Okay, so I've been sort of checking the print every 30 seconds or so. Uh, last time I checked it, it, it seemed pretty close. Um, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel tacky here at all anymore. Um, so, I'll give you a little close up here, I guess. So, this is fully cured. Um, to compare, this is the one here that's got the clear coat on it. So, you can see it, it makes quite a big difference. Um, and,. Uh, yeah, so I think we're going to take it out to the garage, and I will hit it with a clear coat, 
Um, in the last video I did, I showed this upside down. So here it is, the right, right way up. Uh, I'm just using regular Rust-Oleum gloss clear. Uh, I'm sure any clear gloss would work. Um, I have heard some people say that they hit it with a coat of matte um, clear first and then hit it with a, a gloss. Uh, I don't know. I've just been using the, the clear gloss and it seems to be working fine. So uh, I'll head out to the garage and let's see if it makes a difference. Hey, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's cleared it right up and it will stay that way now. Got it glued down. Uh, so yeah. Okay, great. So we managed to print a uh, model in clear resin, uh, dye it in alcohol inks, um, and then dilute the color to get the tint that we wanted um, in IPA. Uh, cure the print and clear coat it to get the glass finish. Um, I mixed the two models up somewhere along the way and I can't tell which was the original, uh, which is a good thing, I guess. So I'll give you a few close-ups here um, just so you can see how, how clear they are. Hopefully they show up okay on camera. Um, but you can see they're just glistening um, and uh, they turned out turned out quite well, so uh, pretty happy with the result. Terrible at focusing these cameras. Um, yeah, so uh, there you have it. Uh, that's how I do it. I know there's a whole bunch of other ways, um, but I appreciate you watching the video, and see you next time.